So this is the range results for today. And I'll lower it. So today, no bayonet, military surplus ammunition out of my Mosin, about 100 yards. Didn't get exact sight distance or, you know, sighting distance because I didn't bring my laser rangefinder with me. Uh, 100 meters on the sight setting, that's where it was clicked out. Two on the rear sight, and I held within here. I definitely seen white from the bottom of the green. I seen a little bit of white, so I was probably aiming right in here. And I, I, I highlighted this whole thing because I didn't aim 100% consistently for some reason. I just couldn't. I never shoot Mosins quite right, you know. It takes a lot, of, it demands a lot to shoot them cons real consistent, but they'll give it back to you. But I shot five shots out of this, All right? Aim point was here, five rounds, two hit here, one here, and one here. I believe the rest of them went high left. So then I switched over and called the ceasefire and I got a hundred yards, uh, one on the sight setting again with my Mosin, with a bayonet flipped out, with military surplus ammunition, with that copper wash ammunition that comes in the loose pack bags. Um, one here, one there, one here, one there, and one here, and I was still aiming here to here, within there. So it's still shooting high, but it brought it down quite a bit. So then, fucking around, because anytime I shoot corrosive ammunition out of my Mosins, I'll shoot as much corrosive as I want, as I have for the day or as I want, and then I'll put 10 rounds of nice brass cased uh, non-corrosive through it, or I've found that the Tula ammo will work as well. If you run non-corrosive through it enough, at least 10, um, you will uh, not have the corrosive issue that you normally have with cleaning. You clean it like a normal non cross rifle and you won't have any issues. Just make sure you get the action halfway decent. You know, you ain't gotta really pay much attention to it. So then this was 100 yards, five shots with my Mosin, 148 grain Tula, full metal jacket with the bayonet out, and then 100 meters on the sight setting today. I date my stuff. And this is what I got, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one. No, 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 one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So one, two, three, four, five. So within, you know, hands. So, you know, was, would this be one, two, three, four, five, five and a half inches at 100 yards? And my aim point was down here the same. And it probably, I think I had a little bit of white down here as well. Maybe not so bad. Probably right here. I, yeah, so about where my finger's at. So I had the front foot. So, Sight post about zo, and it shot about here. And you know, it is what it is. This is the first kind of group I've done with that really, and actually wanted to hold on to it. So that's what I've done with this today. It does bring down your sights, or the putting your bayonet out on your M44 helps with um, shooting high helps bring it down here's some of the other stuff that i've done that aim the general stuff that i've done with the 762 by 54r with my psl this is the same ammunition i shot five shots of this at the um steel after i got done shoot so i shot a box of 20 today of my mosin of the mill syrup shot a box of 20 of the tula and i shot five individual shots of this stuff which is 7.62 by 54 r the 150 grain soft point bow tail. This is five shots. My aim point was about here. Oh, framing, my bad. This is five shots, one here, 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 and here. So one, two, three, four, five. Five shots, PSL, 100 yard, PPU, 150 grain soft point, factory brass, I didn't, as in it wasn't reloaded. And this is where my scope was set out to. The top one was 100 yards and the side one for windage was zero. And my aim point was from here to here with all five rounds and got a decent, you know, three inch group or so. 
Here's another one I had that was on a windy day. I think it was a shot the same day. What was the date on this one? I don't think I... I don't date everyone. I got to get in a better habit of dating them. Because wind and, you know, atmospheric, barometric pressures and stuff. 180 grain, full metal jacket, the tactical stuff. $34 for a box of 20. Five shots. One on the top and zero on the windage. 100 yards, KNS. 20 clicks closed. 180 e grain Sierra or seller below tactical full metal jacket. It's a windy day. Aim point was from here to here, and I got one, two, three, four, five kind of a circular pattern. You know, another three inch group or so. Here's the a group with the 203 grain soft point. These are all with my. PSL 203 grain soft point here the brown bear stuff I was able to find a box of it I've spent a lot in ammunition on these per box but I wanted a decent record of what it will do and this is before this is just with the KS piston that I put on it so 762 by 54 r 203 grain uh, soft point five shots 26 of June 2021 29 approximate clicks KNS piston, PSL, 203 grain, soft point, brown bear, windy day, 100 yards, one and zero, and then the caliber. So my aim point, I always try to aim right in here, you know, or whatnot. I don't think I have it written down. Yeah, no, I don't have it written down on the other side here. So aim point in here, and I got aim point in here, and I got one, two, three, four, and five. You know, um... I'm going to do this because these are all standard. Oh, if I can. Ah. Actually, Pepsi can. Yeah, that's the size comparison. So, you could hit a Pepsi can out there. Miss one or two shots at 100 yards. Not too bad. Not great. Philosophy use. So, just a review. Pepsi can. Another Pepsi can. You know. Pepsi's pretty easy to reference. Another, you know. That was a 203 grain. There's another group with 203 grain with a different target. Try to aim about in here. One, two, three. This is three shots. 100 yards, three shots. 203 grain soft point brown bear PSL. You know, one, two, and three. And bang. Yeah. So. Here, that's a better listing. Backside of that target. A little easier to see. 200 grain wolf. This is the bimetal uh, soft point. It's the copper wash stuff, if I remember correctly. And this one I actually drew where my Chevron was about laying, and I got a good reference point on this one. And it says 100 meters on the elevation, zero wind, five shots, Wolf 200 grain soft point, bimetal, 100 yards, PSL, copper washed, 5th of July of last year, 2021. And as you can see, minute of pips again but it did it this one two three four five so it's stringing them wide ways not up and down which i mean i appreciate having the elevation right it's just width is kind of weird i don't know how to fix that hopefully it's in the shop right now getting worked on hopefully it'll group differently because i bought a full nelson for it one of the q suppressors so Red Army Standard, 148 grain, full metal jacket. Um, Tula case, five shots. You know, basically Tula ammunition. My aim point was right here. And 
not even minute of Pepsi can. You had one on one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So, you know, pretty fucking big root, really. But it all is up and down, right? So, it leads me to believe something's kind of messed up with the rifle in a way for that kind of pattern. That's the only ones so far that I have for right now. I've got to get, um, uh, I want to get some of these loaded. They're a Lehigh Defense 180 grain solid copper bullet. There's no lead. It's a boat tail. It's kind of long for a 180 grain bullet. I want to get some of these loaded, but I got to get, I want to get a Reloader 15 for it. I've got Magnum primers I'd like to use because I've got some old stock of them. I got 200 rounds of the, or 200 primers for Magnums. Oh, sorry framing you know i got 200 rounds of magnums i'd like to use for those and those are just 50 bullets so i could use that and then i've got a couple of loose that i used to uh, that a long time ago i pulled down some heavy ball penetrant rounds it's got the yellow and silver stripe on them and uh i, I got 50 rounds of those that i can load so i can load 100 rounds up and i'd like to get those loaded and the lehigh's i don't mind shooting so much the 182 grain heavy ball penetrant stuff i'm not going to shoot unless if it comes down to really needing to with those lehigh's i'd like to shoot and get some more of i seen that i don't think i right now as of today the 26th of march i don't think i can get um the 180 grains anymore they're out of stock again but i can get the 150 grains and that thing is meant for 150 grains for the twist of the rifle for the psl and the mosin but what I thought about doing, since I want to try to introduce my wife into rifle shooting, actual traditional rifle shooting, thought about just loading some of this tight group up at like 10 grains with my Lehigh bullets and seeing just how, you know, she's recoil sensitive. She bruised on a 9mm CZ Scorpion, you know, whatever. Um, I'd like to get her to shoot a traditional bolt action, so... That was my way of doing it. I have those bullets, I have the powder, and I have the primer, so I could just load them right up. But I'd hate to waste a 90 cent per bullet thing on a 10 grain charge of powder. It's kind of a waste, in my opinion, just for somebody to go bang that doesn't really appreciate rifles as much as I do, at least. So it is what it is. So, anyways, till next time, I'm gonna get those targets and that minder and on the back side of it because that minder will serve serve as my target binder for a record um but yeah both my rifles are now in the smith shop getting worked on i want my mosin to cycle like a fucking hot knife cutting butter to make sense i just want it to be like a swiss straight pull you just smooth you know on the uh bolting of it because i've always kind of wanted that i've seen how gun geek He's had Mosins that have worked really well on the old winter, like, house fever type challenges. I've seen those, and I was always jealous of how smooth his rifle operated. Because I've had a, a couple of Mosins run through my hands. And they all, the one I have now is actually the best one. They all are real stiff on bolt opening. So, yeah. I shot 20 rounds of that corrosive copper wash. It didn't have, it cycled like a regular Mosin. It didn't have any um, sticking issues. But then I shot that 20 of the tooling ammo. And that stuff started to stick, and then I shot my five in my brass case, and it cycled like the, the copper wash stuff. It was fine. So I have them uh, going through and trying to polish everything up inside the bolt so to see if I can get it to work better. And uh, the um, barrel band, the rear barrel band for the handguard, uh, the spring retainer actually broke off, so I'm having them fix that as well. So they're going to fix that. The PSL's in for a thread job. So it can go from like half by a uh, 24 to 5 8 by 28 or whatever for my Q full Nelson. So I can have a suppressed um, PSL. And uh, one of the things the dude said there, said there at the fucking uh, shop was like, well, you ever seen any e subsonic, you know, Russian ammunition for that? And I'm like, that's not the point of what I'm doing. You know, I just want 
uh, light and dust uh, signatures to be reduced. But yeah, he had it up in the lathe. It does, the, the bore of the PSL is evidently not concentric to the outside barrel. So it's just like your circle's like this for the outer. And your inner is, you know, kind of like off, you know. So they're having a... It ain't one to indicate what they're saying. But he showed it to me today. And he's got it in the lathe. And he's got the live center. I think it was a live center on the end of the muzzle. And then he's got the whole action chucked up into the chuck of the lathe and he took the barrel and was actually going like that like a fucking string a tight string on it i'm like god damn that has that barrel has like no rigidity to it but i was thinking about it today and it's for accuracy right accuracy is all about consistency so you could have all the barrel whip and you you want in it so long as your loads are consistent enough that it's not gonna it's gonna whip the same every time so i ain't really too worried about it but i didn't mention something before i was like because if I were to reload for this, for P this PSL, it'd be easier to get 308 diameter bullets. And I know the Lee, ex the Lee, um, the cheap Lee Nyes have a 308 expander. So I could run, you know, basically 7.62 by 54R and it's a true 30 cal, an American standard 30 cal instead of 310 and a half. And I could get a lot more bullet selection out of that. And I could actually run my actual loads from my, um, what the fuck? I think it was a Lyman manual. One of my reloading manuals, the only manual I got. Yeah, let me look. Yeah, it's the Lyman one because it gives me the, yeah, this. Yeah, this bear, when you look up 7.62 by 54R, they're showing me cases norma they run this is what they run in the test tender length federal large rifle number 17 they're running the these bullets 310 312 and whatnot for the jacket of bullets used right size to 313 for that one and their seiko 26 inch nine and a half twist 313 groove diameter um but you only got 125 grain 150 grain 174 180 and then the cast 200 grain and this is the new one if i go on the internet and i look up the imr powder data center the reloading data center they've got all 308 diameter bullets in there i'm like what kind of horse shit is this so i guess i could follow that's what i was worried about is like well if i run the 180 grain stuff in my psl for their loads um, I'm going to have less pressure out of a 308 bullet than I will a 310 or 311 bullet because I have less friction. So those loads aren't accurate on the internet and I've always gone by the internet loads generally. But I figured I'd get more bullet selection with a 308 bore and I was going to get like a fat stainless steel barrel the best I could. Instead of having the chrome line barrel, having like a stainless barrel, and then just like spray painters or some shit. And that way I can have a 308, just take the 308 barrel blank and have them turn it down and put it into my PSL. And uh, I talked to him about that and he's like, we really don't have the stuff to do that per se. And uh, I asked him today, I was like, that, he's like, this thing's, this thing's doesn't have any rigidity to it. So I've got to get it in, into the actual, they got that fucking like the zelda eye of truth uh lathe center where they clamp it around it's got the three prong that holds onto the barrel to keep it in center so it doesn't flex um he's like this thing don't have any rigidity to it plus it's not one to indicate right i'm like um you know i told you about that idea i had you told me no so you're gonna have to do that i mean and I told him, I reiterated the idea, and he's like, yeah, but you're going to have so much money into that that it's not going to be worth it. I'm like, that rifle is not necessarily, it, that PSL is not about money for me. It's my one and only rifle in a way, you know. That's my gun. I Like, I won't have, I won't really buy any other weapons for me, at least. It's the two I'm going to have. It's that Mosin and that fucking PSL. And then my FNX 45, that's my weapon set. That's all I'm going to run. I have my 870 and I have my uh, 6.5 Jap. 
and I've got a, I got three shotguns. I got a bolt action 12 gauge. I've got a sweet 16, and I've got that 20 gauge 870. And is it not gonna get rid of them? But I'm not really using them, you know. The 6.5 Jap. The only thing that could, the only thing I could do with that is to sell it to one of my friends back home. And. that's the only thing like i can't afford to be loading for that 6.5 jap in a way because box of fucking loaded ammunition was 90 dollars 80 90 dollars brass is only made by ppu and i can get a box of 50 or a bag of 50 of that for 45 bucks and you know i could load for it but like i'm just saying like i'd rather just buy ammunition for it and then shoot it and that 6.5 is not worth enough in my opinion and the way a it the, the, the idea behind it, it's not worth enough for me to, to pursue it heavily. Because there's... I can't put a scope on it, you know? And it doesn't... It's not common caliber as my Mosin. And I'm not getting rid of my Mosin because it's like a brand new Mosin. And I like shooting my Mosin. But basically, they're having problems with my PSL. And I bought that fucking suppressor for it. And they're having problems putting threads on it to put a thread adapter on it. So that way I can direct thread a full nelson on it so i'm gonna hopefully they'll get it by the time i come back because i'm going to a training event for a month and when i come back i hopefully will have my mosin and my psl completed and i'll pay for it and i'll regroup my uh psl and see how it shoots suppressed hopefully it works yeah but that's what I was kind of worried about too. Is when I come up with the idea of having a 308 barrel made for that PSL, is like I was worried about shooting suppressors, you know, through suppressors. I was like, most of them are made for 308, 308 Winchester, so they are centered on a 308 bullet. Well, I got talking to the gunsmith there, the the dude that owns the place, and he said that they allow you a sixty thousandths over tolerance on your baffles, so you don't have baffle strikes. And he's like, you could shoot your oversized 30 cal out of that, no problem. So hopefully I can get her. I don't want to do any, any um, hand tools for it. They say they don't like doing hand tools. They like doing stuff on the lathe to make it right. And I'm going to let them see if they got it. So I trust them. That's all you can do. But yeah, so I went to the range. Did all right. Didn't even hurt my shoulder that bad. That thing doesn't kick too bad. you got to really pay attention to where you put it in your shoulder, how you, you hold on to it, and how you sight down it. And there's a lot of monkeying around with it to figure it out. But anyways, this is gonna be my last range day until I come back from the training event. And hopefully I'll have all my stuff done by then. Um, Mosin ammo isn't cheap anymore. For the steel case stuff, they want nearly a dollar a shot. For the brass case stuff, they went nearly two dollars a shot off the internet, and over there they have got that like Czechs Czechoslovakian nice box package. They've got it boxed up, and at the range they want thirty bucks a box for corrosive ammunition, and I'm not trying to pay that. I will if I want to, but like I'm not just trying to stock stuff just to stock stuff for thirty bucks. They have the Barnall stuff I've been seeing for 174 grain. Um, that's you know. That's there. Uh, I can get 500 rounds of that. They've got the Tula stuff. That's 150 grain full metal jacket. And then they've got the uh, SG ammo has a little bit of that 182 grain brass case corrosive stuff. That's there was a short contract run supposedly of that for the the Mosin ammo. That stuff's about a dollar a shot. It's not reloadable. None of this ammo is reloadable except for the uh, Privy Partisan. You could find the 150 grain soft point boat tails or it's so, it just a soft point i don't even think it's a boat tail but still soft point and that stuff i'm there midway limits you to two boxes and i bought two boxes for a dollar 62 around it it is what they told me so and i paid chippy for it so i just bought it to, to see how it goes to buy ammunition off the internet because i've never bought ammunition off the internet except for that 40 rounds i just bought because i bought me a uh, leopold uh range finder um but yeah it actually was kind of convenient. You order what you want. Came in a cardboard box and it was wet that day. And the cardboard boxes, 
there's cardboard or boxes obviously that the ammo comes in so there's no water barrier so the cardboard that it, the ammunition was stored in like the actual pbu cardboard was a little damp but it didn't hurt the ammunition because that you know you can get ammunition soaked wet and then dried back out and it ain't gonna hurt it generally as long as it's not like soaking in water forever but and actually it's better to buy in, in, ammunition off the internet in my opinion because then it just gets drop shipped to the house and you got a well enough paying job you should be able to just have 200 to 300 rounds stocked up no matter how much shooting you do because an average man's going to go through at most 100 rounds in a range day and you shoot once a weekend that's what i've been doing at least so if you buy 200 rounds a week or 500 rounds every time every two weeks you still got plenty of ammo oh, stored up in case if you want to if you want to go hunting or something and just there's no ammo available so anyways toodles